any words that would help you in any way in your life, of course, just trying to share the love and work, of course, in the collective consciousness with all of you guys who, again, are a part of this big entire soul family. So today, guys, I'm going to speak about something some of you may know that I do me or may not know that I work with energy uh, healing modality. And you can call it either a Reiki or you can call it vibrational medicine. You can call it energy work. It is just the use of an energy or a process of working with things to get to the bottom of, you know, your healing process individually that you need to go on. And of course, this does involve sometimes, of course, me with other people working with them, healing them with you know, my process, which I will explain, but also I just wanted to talk on this podcast about how important it is to recognize that you also can tap into that absolutely divine capacity to heal yourself and others, which is a beautiful thing to do. And it is a beautiful way that is an exchange of energy that is mutually symbiotically gravitationally beneficial for both people. I know that I just get so emotionally involved when I am sending loving intent and working with people's karmic blockages and healing with my energy work. So I'll explain how important it is when we are healing ourselves, not just to rely on modern Western medicine that, of course, as you all know, involves force feeding, pharmaceuticals, pills, and all kind of detrimental chemicals like chemotherapy into our body and just taking a wild guess, working on, you know, a molecular scale instead of investigating or even doing any kind of simultaneous work with holistic modalities and healing energy. And it is definitely a personal story, but mine is mental health that after my father passed, and I speak on this on many videos, but if you're new to my channel, after my father passed in 2011, I definitely suffered with getting anti-anxiety medications, uh, not antidepressant, but the Xanax uh, was a very bad choice, coping in the wrong way. And now that I've been pill-free for so long, it is such a holistic, more beautiful healing that I've been able to do after some really hard spiritual work and I will explain how you know I heal others and how I healed myself how you can heal yourself and how you can heal others the process that goes along with it um, we need a blend of this healing done to our soul our mind our energy and our matter so our soul is representative of being our spirit or subconscious or higher consciousness you know, right? And our mind is representative of the intellectual, like the intellectual motherboard. I want to say, the main hard drive. Um, it's like the force that is our soul's engineer and distributor of our thoughts. So the energy is being the electrically kind of real rubbed up, charged flow of life force that is ever present and flows almost like your blood, but it is energy waves, right? Um, and the matter, of course, is representative of our body, our flesh, our physical vessel, our blood, our bones, all in its entirety that is made up of our physical selves. So we need, again, a blend of this. We need um, to work on all four, soul, mind, energy, and matter, right? And there is a sacred process in how I work with vibrational medicine and how we can, you and I, can continue to use this energy healing on yourself, you know, Definitely, it is for sure one of my main points I always reference to private clients, friends, anyone that knows me because they ask me how I'm able to endure pain off of any pain medication or not going through with a fifth back surgery. I've had four surgeries on my back, lower spine, and I let them know that I'm able to work on myself with using Reiki or vibrational medicine, healing energy, positive intention directed with my thoughts through to the energy down to the core of my matter and heal. So I'm able to do that and you are as well. We are all, we are all definitely capable and able to tap into it and you know, it does not need to be said, but I will say it um, because the theme of this week, never listen to anyone that says that this, you know, energy healing keep capacity or, you know, ability to tap into the divine and heal mind, 
body and soul, especially, you know, mental, mental and physical conditions can, you know, really debilitate us. And so working with divine and getting these positive feelings and projecting that outward and giving that also paying it forward to others while you heal yourself is a beautiful thing. So never listen to anybody that is in that, you know, brainwashed cult type, um, segmented mentality saying that that is something that is of dark. No, definitely, definitely not. It is something of the light and there is a sacred process. The sacred process and how we use this energy again is we start with the soul work. We always must first start with the soul. That is so important. So the sacred process, if you work first to purge any kind of blockages, you know, remove any kind of traumatic clogs, any karmic work, shadow work that needs to be dealt with, you know, and you have yet to release and there is built up tension, just like tension gets into muscles, tension gets into this energy flow. And that's, that's how I've been intuitively guided from, you know, spirit. That is how I want to analyze it for you guys. And the sacred order works just like this. If we want to talk in layman's terms, our soul is the boss of thinking, right? Thinking is then the boss of directing our energy and energy is the boss of instructing, directing and healing the matter, our body. So if you do those things and those steps working with someone, you know, um, when I work with people, it is all about, of course, the first step, which is um, me with them and working energetically. Of course, there is um, different philosophies like through Reiki that I follow and also, also Chinese, ancient Chinese medicine, which is using your hands, but not touching uh, the person that is in need of healing. It's kind of like you're touching the outside aura that you see on the aura scans. You're touching the energy flow fields. They're emanating vibrations, you know, touching them with a more precise um, connection than just, of course, when you're with somebody, you totally connect. But this is more of a directed intent. And something that I want to talk about is the importance and observation and correlation between emotional and physical illness. So it is definitely recorded scientifically now, documented that stress leads to disease, stress causes illness. And so the correlation is there in black and white that our emotional health does play into our physical health. So the things that we do have that are traumatic blockages or things that are in our, you know, field of energy that is not emotional or mental wellness, of course, that is going to manifest into a physical form and disease and or problem or chronic pain all kind of sorts of things, uh, mental, you know, um, illnesses that will develop and just, or get worse if you already have prone anxiety or whatnot. So this is just, you know, very much in correlation with what we do when we base our healing on not just the quick fix band-aid, let's get a pill to mask the symptoms or take care of the symptoms, symptomatic type of, you know, Western philosophy for healing. But when we integrate all of these things, of course, and working with all of them constantly and doing meditative work, breath work, all of these things really do help. Of course, organic food, any food that you look up according to your blood type and um, need for, you know, the area that is ill or, you know, a need for healing in some area. There are specific foods, especially teas. It is amazing what you can find that places all over the world actually do use and just for the mainstream and the majority of the population of the globe it has been i believe concealed i'm one of those people who keep an open mind on everything but to me it's one of the things that i have observed and been intrigued with and ponder whether or not of course this is a directed um, type of thing for the money, of course, for the pharmaceutical companies and all the money that goes into, you know, um, when we are affected by a huge um, disease like AIDS or cancer and the money that goes into people trying to get assistance. And so sometimes, of course, people have, you know, professed that they believe this may have been on purpose. So we just have to remind ourselves that we can do anything, you know, anything at all. What we put out is what we get in. So our thoughts become reality as we always talk about. We are 
definitely co-creators in my opinion. I believe in my heart that we can do wonders with a positive intention and the thought process of that, you know, working with the soul first, removing things that are blocking your ability to do this and your purity to process these things and work with this energy flow, right? And just follow the process. I mean, it's just a beautiful thing when we allow ourselves to believe, and whether or not you're a skeptic or you're a believer of the divine, it's all the same thing. Even if you're a believer in, you know, the um, projected holographic universe, if you're a believer in whatever you are, it's still the same thing. There is no good that ever comes with projecting negative thoughts. If you get sick and you tell yourself you're not going to get well, you're not going to get well, we are like magnets, just like the law of attraction says. When we project negative assumptions or negative thoughts or self-talk that is negative and harmful to ourself and our psyche, then unfortunately, that is what we're going to receive back still longer and longer. So when we're sick, we'll get sicker. Instead of when we are sick and we project positive intent, that's why it's a beautiful thing to pray for somebody when they are under, you know, duress or having an illness because it really does work. The energy flows through, in my opinion, exponentially and can infinitely be binaurally transferred to whomever you are thinking of, right? It is definitely a powerful capacity that we have that is a beautiful gift, I believe, from the divine. And I believe we are all the same light beings in a vessel. And because it is such a rough ride here on earth, our physical vessel is going to go through some shit, either by accident, you know, getting our bones crushed, flesh, flesh you know, all that horrible things, burns. Or, of course, it's the emotional manifestations that stay inside of us as karmic blockages. And we need to purge as we have these life experiences that bring this on. So it's all, of, of course, as I believe all things are, it's all connected. It's all interwoven. It's all intertwined. And when we work with everything as a whole, and we deny these kind of programs that people time and time again want to shove down our throats and let us know that no, there is no proof that there, you know, is an afterlife in heaven. There's no proof that, you know, this divine energy vibrational medicine works. There's no, you know what? There doesn't have to be as long as you believe in the fact that it is fact. It does occur. If you believe and manifest again, what you throw out, you're like a magnet. You're going to get back tenfold. And this is a beautiful thing to keep in mind. The divine doesn't play favorites. Everyone is entitled to using this healing. And using this healing is very, very pivotal in sticking around this very, very tumultuous environment that has pretty much always been on the earth. We've always had crazy things happening, right? Wars and people trying to kill each other based on religious beliefs from the beginning of time. So it's so important right now to all gather up. Like I hope most of you are doing, who's ever listening to this, I really hope, and just do the work on yourselves or others in the sacred order, right? Soul is the boss of your thoughts. Thinking is the boss of your energy. Energy is the boss of your matter, guys. Blessings, love, and light. And as always, I appreciate you for listening. And I thank you so much for listening to my authentic truth. And I hope I was able to reach anybody and resonate maybe with even a tiny bit of this in any way. Bye-bye, guys.